All right, welcome to our last series three, episode ten podcast. So this is our last podcast at our series three, and tomorrow is our first anniversary of our site talk videos and everything have we learned for our first year anniversary. So, what did we talk about last time? We talked about the periodic table of elements. And we talked about what is the periodic table of elements. And it's not complicated, but it looks complicated. But it's all the chemical elements that occur in the universe. And we also talked about atoms that are the smallest unit of an element. And they're made up of, of a... Nucleus composed of photons and neutrons and number of electrons orbiting in different shells or orbitals. So we also talk about the numbers of photons, neutrons, and electrons and then elements, atoms that determine its properties. So today we are going to talk about the groups of the periodic table and we're going to read the description for today. Here we go. Curious about all the elements of the universe? Consult the periodic table to learn more. So in this conversation today, we will tell you what what is in the periodic table of elements. You will learn about the atomic number, atomic mass, and chemical symbols. You'll also find out what information is listed on each element, as well as how you read the table, and we will teach you about you about the different groupings of categories of elements like metals, nonmetals, and noble gases. Now you know it all. Alright, so We're going to learn about the periodic table of elements, how to read the periodic table of elements. And we're going to do the conversation right now. All right, the modern periodic table of elements organizes elements so that it's easier to see how elements relate to one another. First off, the elements are listed by their atomic number or number of photons and their atomic nucleo. All right, so I'm going to show you something. This is the periodic table of elements right here. Over here, we got understanding the periodic table. So the atomic number is right here. The symbol is right here in the name. And it's found in an atomic weight. So, for example, let's say manganese is the name. The symbol is MN. The atomic number is 25. And the atomic weight is 554.938. So, this is it. You can find that here, what I just told you. The atomic number is 20 right here. Along with the element symbol, name, and related atomic mass. You can read across the table this way. Showing it right here. This way. Hydrogen has one photon. Helium has two. Lithium three. Beryllium four four on five, and so on. Reading across this way, the sets are called periods. You remember how electrons orbit in shells, right? Well, periods describe the number of electron shells that elements have. Period one consists of only two elements, hydrogen and helium. These guys only have one electron shell. Period two contains elements with two electron shells. The first shell contains two electrons, and the second one can hold up to eight electrons. As you read across a period that other shells 
fills up with electrons. So lithium has one electron shell and the other shell, sorry. So lithium has one electron and the other shell. Beryllium has two electrons. Boron has three and so on. By the time you get to the far right side, the other shell is completely full. The six and seven periods contain so many elements. Scientists took some in and put them underneath. The, confi the configuration of electrons in an atom's outer shell plays an important role too. It determines what other kinds of elements it can bond with. On the periodic table, elements with singular configurations of electrons are arranged in vertical columns called groups. Groups are number 1 to Sorry, groups are number 1 to 18. In some of these groups, the elements don't have that much in common. But that's not always the case. Take a look at group 1. Right here. All of the elements in this group have exactly one electron. So these groups right here have exactly one electron. And their most outer most shells. That means they're likely to form positive ions. They're also likely to bond with elements in group 17, whose outer shells are one electron shy or for being completely full. The periodic table is also organized by color into different categories. These categories are organized by properties of the elements. Alkaline metals like sodium all can react with water to produce alkaline solutions. Alkaline earth metals like calcium also produce alkaline solutions when combined with water and are found all over the place on earth. Transition metals like iron are strong and shiny. Poor metals such as lead are soft with low melting point. Semi-metals like silicon conduct electricity only under contained certain conditions and are useful in electronics. Non-metals have a variety of properties and include the carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen vital to life on Earth. Normal gases like helium and neon have outer electron shells that are full and so they don't often react with other elements. I've seen tables with elements going all the way up to atomic number 118, but any element above 92 in uranium is too unstable to occur in nature and has to be made in a lab. Another cool thing about this table is that because it's based on the number of photons and you can't have a half a photon. Scientists are pretty sure there aren't any holes in the table. Using an early version of the table, scientists were even able to predict the extents of elements like neon and uranium before they were even discovered. And that's the end of the elements conversation. All right, we are going to take a pop quiz. Here we go. One, what characteristics are shared by all alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals? Five seconds, you should know this one. Five, four, three, two, one. It is C. Number two, carbon has an atomic number of six. What can you conclude about carbon from this fact? Ten seconds to think. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, it has six photons. Number three, noble gases are sometimes called intergases. What can you infer about the meaning word of the word enter in the chemistry? 
Um, we didn't talk about really, so it is B. We're not talking about intergases. What do the orange and yellow spares represents in the model of an atomic nucleus? You should know this one. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is B. Photons and neutrons. What do the elements highlighted in red have in common? Seven seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is D. The same number of electron shells. Which of the following is the true statement? So you can read all those. I will give you this time 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is A. What is true of all atoms? Seven seconds. You should know already this in the conversation. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is. D. They contain at least one photon. What is one key physical difference between transistor metals and poor metals? Give you 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is. The hardness and it's B. Nine, if you wanted to find a sample of fernium, which has an atomic number of 100, where will you look? Give you 10 seconds. Five, four, three, Two, one. The answer is in the science lab. Last question. To become possibly charged, an atom must gain a photon, lose a photon, gain an electron, or lose an electron. Five seconds. You should know this one. Three, two, one. We all know it. And it is D. Lose an electron. All right, so please, and Saturday is our first anniversary of Sci Talk. So I'm going to post that YouTube channel video, and we will see you guys on the next Kahoot round. We will see you guys tomorrow.